uh, to talk about all these struggles uh, in the growth of cloud native projects and how that relates to inclusion, inclusion and bias and why not trying to find a way to, to be uh, kind and have empathy in those projects. So over you to you, Kunal. Thank you so much. Bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour. Did I say that right? Okay. Well, thank you, still learning. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Ooh, I should mirror that. Hold on. Display. And mirror. That looks good. Okay. Hopefully that would work. Nice. All right, uh, thanks everyone for joining. We're gonna talk about uh, addressing bias and uh, you know inclusion and uh, all sorts of things. But uh, my co-speaker Akanksha could not join because of uh, travel restrictions, some visa issues um, from India. So I'm speaking on, on, on her behalf. So shout out to her as well for helping me put this presentation and talk together. A um, bit about me, I'm, uh, I'm Kunal, I work as, um, I should probably do that later. Um, Kunal, I work as a DevRel manager at SIVO, uh, CNC ambassador, very nice to be here. I love cloud native rejects, so um, very good. All right, uh, so Microsoft CEO, Satya Nadella, said that there is one trait which is more important than uh, talent or experience, Anyone guess what that trait is? Yeah, it's important. Empathy. empathy. Yeah. <laughs> so empathy makes you a better innovator. We're going to talk more about empathy. If you don't already know, it's um, essentially a trait um, by which you understand the point of view of others, uh, share their feelings, put yourself in other people's shoes. And uh, an important question I have for everyone over here is, if you can just scan this QR code, you don't have to sign up, it's anonymous. So we'll just do a little poll. So the first one is, um, how many years of experience do you have? You can still scan it, yeah, it's still over there. It's reading, uh, reading the crowd. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Good, good mix of people, good, good chunk of people. All right. Cool. The next one is important, which is, is empathy irrelevant to software engineers? Yes or no? Oh, <laughs> you can you 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 can edit it. You can edit it. <laughs> All right. Well, there's still some people who maybe I I hope it's an error. But anyway, <laughs> uh, the last question is. Uh, some some really nice things to try in Paris. If you can give your recommendations really quickly. I went to an Ethiopian place last night uh, with Duffy. Uh, it's really good. Any bread? Present at rejects. All right. Disneyland. Not sure we have time for that. They used to do, they did Disneyland KubeCon thing before. LA, LA yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember there, there was some group like KubeCon Disneyland something happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So is empathy relevant to software engineers? Many of you said no. Um, 
It's not irrelevant, meaning it is relevant. I think that is true. The reason, can anyone give me a reason why? Why is empathy relevant? Yeah. It's the same thing, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's very true. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, understanding the the users and working with the teammates, there are two. There's one very important aspect to both of these things, and that is communication. So, coding is about delivering messages to people and machines, and it leads to communication. And forget about tech. Anywhere where communication plays, like anywhere in your life when communication is, a, is an aspect, like empathy plays a role over there. That is ergo why when you're you know, a software developer, it's, it plays a crucial role. But I've divided this talk in like uh, three parts as well. Like we'll talk about empathy for users, obviously for your open source contributors, um, for leaders and for teammates. Question, now what is the first step towards solving any problem? Like forget, forget about like tech, in general, any problem you wanna solve. What is the first step? Understanding the problem, recognizing the problem. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, obviously I'll do it in, in a way that developers can relate. So we'll talk about what prevents empathy. So we'll talk about a lot of biases and feel free to raise hands if you feel like you have suffered from this bias. So the first one is confirmation bias. So this is the tendency to seek out information that confirms pre-existing beliefs or assumptions while ignoring the information that contradicts them. So developers who suffer from this bias may only seek out user feedback that confirms their assumptions about the product rather than seeking out feedback that like challenges their assumptions. So I, I have suffered from this in the past. Next one, curse of knowledge. I know everything. You know, developers who suffer from curse of knowledge uh, may assume that other people have the same sort of like expertise as them, uh, which can lead to products that are difficult to use and understand, and also poor documentation. If you're contributing to docs, I think being a beginner is one of the best skills you can have uh, because you bring a new perspective. I just put curse on Google Images, so it showed me Voldemort. So it's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not really relevant to, it's just, yeah. Anyway, hindsight bias, which is a tendency to believe that events were more predictable after they have occurred. So developers who face uh, this sort of bias uh, believe that the feedback that they get was like obvious in retrospect, even if they did not consider it during the development phase. So they get some feedback and they're like, yeah, I did think about that, but in reality, you did not. Availability bias, which is the tendency to rely on uh, readily available information when making decisions rather than seeking out more comprehensive solutions. So devs who suffer from this uh, may rely on feedback from a small user group um, and ignore the feedback that is more difficult to obtain. I don't know why Brad Pitt is there. <laughs> I have no idea. It's, it's def yes, Moneyball. It's because of the movie, yeah. Gender bias, um, you know, we have seen this as well. Um, unfair preferences against uh, individuals based on their genders. So, um, we know, you know what we're talking about, like um, not giving platforms to, you know, women, for example, or other people um, being not very inclusive. The, one of the main challenges with communities that are gender biased is that it makes it difficult for people who might feel like they are excluded from joining the community get access to the community. So whenever you're forming communities, try to form it around people who feel like they might be might be excluded. So yeah, we we have, you know we have all, it's a very you know major topic. We have all seen this. Cultural bias is the tendency to favor certain cultural norms and overlook those that are from different backgrounds. So developers from different cultures might find their ideas less ac accepted or understood. And also in, in your company, there might be like holiday days that would be, you know. So I live in UK now, and uh, 
obviously UK does not have Indian public holidays. So Mark, our CEO, he was like, yeah, it's fine. You can take Indian holidays and you can skip the UK holidays. It's fine. Just tell the HR people. So that's another a, a, a good, good example. Age bias, ageism, is it called? Uh, discriminating against, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Don't want to get canceled. Experienced older people? Older in age? Elderly. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this could be like, you know, tech, tech companies who favor like young developers due to the stereotypes about uh, technological adeptness and uh, overlooking older developers for promotions despite the vast experience that they bring. Affinity bias. So this goes on and on. We're already messed up, aren't we? Affinity bias is um, the unconscious uh, preference for people who share similar qualities and experiences uh, or backgrounds with oneself. So in development teams, it might result in uh, managers who favor team members who have specific uh, similar coding styles, went to the same school, and um, yeah, that's another one. Status quo bias, which is, uh, you know, the preference for existing state of affairs, resisting change for new ideas. So this can manifest um, in uh, development teams as a resistance to adopting new technologies or methodologies sticking to familiar tools and processes even when better options are available. A good example for this is platform engineering. It's like very difficult to, con like one of the biggest challenges with adopting platform engineering is uh, the team is just not willing to explore the change in culture. I think that's one of the biggest ones. Uh, recency bias, which is the tendency to weigh in recent events and experiences more heavily than the earlier ones in decision making. So this might be evident in development uh, when a team overemphasizes a recent success or failure, leading to skewed decision making for future projects or technology choices rather than considering a longer history of experiences like over the years. Can also lead to demotivation, like everything is going nicely and then you do one thing wrong and it's just, go, go the motivation goes downhill. So that's not, all right, we're done. Anyone suffers from any one of these? You don't have to say which one. You're lying, or everyone is lying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, so how do we fix it? Uh, let's talk about users, the art of listening, listen to your users, how to apply empathy with users. So creating personas can help. Personas are fictional characters, which you can create based upon your research to represent a different user type um, that might use your products and your services. Uh, or your brand in a similar way. In addition to this, conducting surveys, user testing, interviews, analytics, focus groups, so on and so forth. <laughs> this is a little map that uh, I like to use, which is uh, audience versus actions. So figure out who your audience is, what they need, identify the individuals, um, consider the context and define their needs, then work on the actions. So what's the best action you can take, which is also feasible, and then creating artifacts. When it comes to teams and working effectively as a team, some of the team struggles, like lower team morale, negative work environment, poor communication because of you know, different perspectives, product quality going down because someone mentioned, ineffective problem solving, so on and so forth. These are all the problems and struggles that teams might face if you lack empathy. Conflict resolution is another one, along with, um, you know, if we, if we talk about like what, what, um, what are the benefits in terms of having empathy driven development in your teams, it builds trust, uh, communication, creativity, team morale, and you know, in, in the end you're overall, as a team you're more efficient. Strategies to do it, actively listen to your team members. Uh, no question is a bad question sort of thing, so having an open open workplace where people can ask uh, questions because believe it or not, like some people are hesitant to ask questions because they feel like I would sound, what's a good word? Um, not smart, right? So no question is a bad question. It's a good 
good, good culture. Putting oneself in other people's shoes, practicing curiosity, why is something happening the way it is, thinking outside the box, practicing perspective taking. You might not always relate to the person, but uh, just think from their point of view and uh, providing support, obviously, when teammates get stuck. This is a very my favorite favorite part of the presentation. You, how many of you have um, come across a code sample which is just the worst thing you've ever seen, and the person who wrote this is no longer in reach, left the company or whatever, MIA, left the company. So if a person leaves the company, that's done. Like it's not their responsibility. Like you can't ring them up. Like hey, you know when you worked in this company. You wrote this code. No, you can't do that. Really yeah, <laughs> it's really bad. So, any who who has faced this? Yeah, few people. So, what what did you do? Yeah, you figured it out. Good. <laughs> yeah. Um. That's the thing, like this is uh, something you have, you don't have much control over because the person has, has left the company. So things you have no control over in life, don't worry about it. So again, when we talk about thinking about a pro when we have a problem, just think about you know what the problem is and what do we need to do in order to solve it. And you can't ring the person up or slack them or whatever because they have left the company. So swap the blame for honor. So don't blame the person. Um, but swap it for honor. What, what I mean by that is like, leave the code better than you found it. So like, a, like an archeological site. Um, who are those people who dug up, dig up dinosaurs? Paleontologists, yeah. So they find dinosaurs and then they find like some bones here, some bones there, and then they put it all together in the Natural History Museum. It looks really nice. So what they did is bad code, made it pretty, and then they sort of like reverse engineered it with what they have, and then they made it pretty for the future generations. So work with what you have with the team, with the tips that I shared before for, for teams, um, and leave the code better than you found it because the future people will thank you. And don't forget the documentation. Uh, I like to say good writing is simple writing, so keep it, keep it simple, yeah. Last uh, section is for like the leaders, um, which is um, this point, very important. Who suffers from imposter syndrome? Yeah, me too. Yeah, so imposter syndrome is, uh, is nothing like, it's not some, it's a hot topic, I think. Um, so imposter syndrome, no one, no one invites imposter syndrome. I think we can agree on that. No one is like, I need it, and you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it just happens automatically. I think we can agree on that at least. And another thing we can agree on is it happens to everyone. It, I mean, it can happen to everyone. Senior engineers, juniors. Tom Hanks also suffered from imposter syndrome. Um, he said it in an interview. So two things we have established. It can happen to anyone, and it can happen anytime. So you have no control over it. And again, bringing back to my last point, you don't have to apply this in your life. This is what I do. If I don't have control over something, I just would not stress about it because I don't have control over it. So if I stress about it, what's the best that can happen? Nothing, because I have no control over it. So just think about, okay, this is fine. It's, it's happening to ev most people. You're not inviting imposter syndrome. Cool, what to do? What can I do? So what I did is, uh, sort of like a silver lining, found yourself in a project where you don't know much about the project. No worries, great, new skill to add on my resume, fine. I'll learn it and then I'll talk to people. Because my team has been really empathetic, open source projects I've contributed to like Kubernetes have been really empathetic. It makes it easier to navigate imposter syndrome. Um, so yeah, problem, do you have control over it? Nope, okay, think about the action item, what to do, where you need to be, in the middle, what do you need to do in order to get to point B? And for imposter syndrome, for me that was, you know, if you don't understand this project, okay, I'll learn about this project. If I don't understand this technology, I'll learn about it, this and that. 
whatever. And if you get stuck, then obviously get help. Like Chris was mentioning in the previous talk, just get help, it's fine. So that's a bit uh, slides. Documentation is uh, very important. <laughs> ha uh, has happened with me. So it's like three, three years ago, uh, I was working at a company, it's no docs, nothing. And, uh, and I was like, how am I supposed to understand? Is this, he did give me a good, uh, good tip. It was like, look at the test cases. It's like, yeah, that, that helps. But still, if, if you have docs. So ideally, if, if you're anyone who has, an, has their open source project, they're trying to grow or contribute, so had have good docs, and, and Chris you know, already uh, emphasized on that, but uh, if you are looking for people to contribute to your projects, have good uh, documentation. Yeah. And write readable code. That's another one. So I see all, all the time I see these you know, complex code bases that not really, it, it doesn't really f make a difference in terms of the space and time complexity, but it's just super complex. So I think if you're writing complex code, at least comment it. I, I don't have to tell you what to do, but think about that you're writing code, someone else will read it. And uh, since we're talking about leadership, then some of the finest leaders are the ones who remember what it was like to work their way up from the bottom um, and who can foresee themselves in other people's positions. So last question, can empathy be taught? So if, if you think yes, raise your hands. Yeah, if you think no, raise your hands. Okay. Yeah, it can be taught because it's much more than a feeling, it's a skill. And just like every other skill, it can be taught. Some people obviously, you know, have a, a natural talent, some do not, that's fine. Not a fixed rate that people are born with. But things you can do to incorporate it is listen actively, communicate effectively, and understand the emotions and experiences of others, which is putting yourself in other people's shoes that I talked about previously. Just a time to reflect, think about a time where a lack of empathy caused havoc in a project or work environment. Just think about that and uh, see what could have been done better. And uh, lastly, empathy, you know, it does not require that we have been through the same thing because that's where most people confuse it. They're like, I don't get, I don't really get you because I can't relate. You know, I have never been in this position. Um, but it doesn't have to be that way. It simply means that you meet people where they are now, because this is one of the reasons why people ignore it. Oh, you know, like, I don't relate, it never happened with me, so I can't understand. That's the thing. That is sympathy, I think. If you're sympathizing with someone. Well, thank you, that's me. Um, and thank you to Akanksha as well. And uh, no other slides, I think, but, um, yeah, that's good. Thanks for coming and uh, enjoy the rest of the Cloud Native Rejects and KubeCon if you're coming to KubeCon. <laughs> but I did give a I, I did give a lot of like action items. I like to keep my presentations uh, like a lot of action items. So hopefully that helps. <laughs>